from Canada's Perimeter Institute for Theoretical Physics. Welcome to Perimeter Explorations. The speeds of stars and galaxies aren't the only evidence for the existence of dark matter. Albert Einstein's theory of relativity strengthens the case. His theory says that just as a lens bends light, a large mass in outer space, such as a cluster of galaxies, bends light travelling near it. This is known as gravitational lensing. The bending affects the light reaching us, distorting the image we see of whatever lies beyond the mass. The good news is that lensing occurs whether we can see the mass or not. That means we can detect dark matter within a cluster of galaxies from the distortion it creates in the images we see of more distant galaxies. This is a cluster of galaxies called Abel 2218. The thin arcs are actually images of galaxies far beyond this cluster. Each of these images is showing distortion dominated by huge amounts of dark matter within 2218. Gravitational lensing lets physicists map out detailed distributions of dark matter in vast regions of outer space. In this image, entire galaxies appear as individual white spots, dark matter as pale blue shapes. Putting together what we've learned from the orbital, brightness and lensing methods, there's strong evidence for the existence of vast amounts of dark matter within galaxies, as well as between them. But knowing the dark matter takes up vast portions of the universe still doesn't tell us what dark matter is. Maybe dark matter is made up of planets. They're hard to detect because they only reflect light. Maybe we've failed to see a lot of planets in distant galaxies. The Sun makes up 99.9% .9 of all mass in our solar system. That leaves only 0.1% of the total mass for all the planets, asteroids and comets in the solar system. This means that if dark matter were made up of planets, there'd have to be thousands of planets the size of Jupiter for every single star in every galaxy in the universe. But our solar system has only eight planets, not thousands. So it seems very unlikely that planets account for all of dark matter. Another possibility is that dark matter is made up of brown dwarf stars. They're bigger than planets, up to 10% of the mass of the sun. And they're also hard to detect because they don't shine. Black holes may be another possibility. They have so much mass that even light can't escape from them making them a likely candidate. These two possibilities can be checked out because we can detect brown dwarf stars and many black holes using gravitational lensing on a smaller scale. Instead of looking at distortions in galaxy images within clusters, scientists measure the temporary brightening of individual stars brought about by gravitational lensing. Using this technique, we can account for some dark matter, but not all of it. There's also another way physicists can estimate how much of dark matter is made up of black holes. The explosions that take place when they're created spew out readily detectable heavy elements. From the amount found, they can estimate the total mass of black holes in the universe. These calculations indicate that black holes only account for a small fraction of dark matter. Having ruled out planets, dwarf stars and black holes as making up the bulk of dark matter, scientists looked at a number of other ideas that also failed to deliver. So what other possibilities could be considered? Maybe we got the picture completely wrong about the universe and we should be open-minded. Some physicists think there is no dark matter. Either there is something we haven't seen, some dark matter or whatever, or the theory of gravity is wrong. So people work on modified gravity attempt to explain um, anomalous behaviour in the universe, modifying Einstein's theory of gravity. These scientists think the orbital method can't be used accurately on something as large as a galaxy. I think dark matter really has holes in it, and it's possible that these alternative theories of gravity could correct those holes. 
They think that when it comes to galaxies, Newton's law of universal gravitation needs to be modified. Every time something doesn't work in the sky, you basically either say our theory of gravity is wrong, or um, it's just there's something out there we can't see. Changing the laws of physics is a pretty radical step, but it wouldn't be the first time it's been done. Still, any new law of gravity would have to be rigorously tested before it's accepted. Most physicists are confident that our current ideas about gravity are indeed valid for something as large as a galaxy. For me, it's almost certainly not modifications of gravity and not uh, ordinary matter, like planets or black holes. Maybe there's some new kind of matter there, or, or maybe we don't quite understand how things are working. This, this is always an option for everything. Uh, the preponderance of the evidence is certainly pushing us towards dark matter. I would say that it's probably probability that this dark matter exists is close to 100%. But what makes it compelling is that there's many lines of independent evidence that point in the same place. And in that sense, it's like the evidence for atoms 100 years ago, that what convinced people that atoms existed was not any one line of evidence, but that you had many lines of evidence that all converged on the same conclusion. And dark matter is like that. So all the evidence for dark matter is circumstantial, if you like, but there are four pieces of circumstantial evidence all pointing the same way. So this, this has got to be looked at. These researchers think that the bulk of dark matter is made up of a new type of subatomic particle, one that's completely different from the protons, neutrons and electrons that make up everything on Earth. Many physicists think that hypothetical subatomic particles known as weakly interacting massive particles, or WIMPs, make up the bulk of dark matter. WIMPs were initially proposed because they don't interact with light the fundamental characteristic of dark matter. A new kind of particle, it seems to just nail it in all the places you see it. And so that, for me, is the convincing thing. So I, my money is on some new kind of particle. Axions might also make up the bulk of dark matter. They're very light, having much less mass than even electrons. It doesn't look likely that axions really could be responsible for these kind of things because right now experimentally left only very, very small window where axions could work. Also, it's not so natural prediction of the particle physics. When you run them through simulation, just putting something like a WIMP in the simulation, you generate structure that does very well when you compare it to galaxy rotation curves and the behavior of clusters and the large scale structure. Whether or not the bulk of dark matter is made up of axions or WIMPs, most physicists think that on average, 90% of the mass of every single galaxy in the universe is dark matter.